I'd like to show you how you should be designing your websites and the basic setup you should have for uh, all of your projects and basically everything that you do in web design. First, you need to get Notepad++. There's a link in Moodle, but you can also just do a Google search for it. Just Notepad and the two plus symbols. I've already got it installed and you can see it up on the screen. It's like a really simplified version of Microsoft Word, but it's meant for all of this coding stuff that we're gonna do. So to create an HTML document in this program, it's really simple. You just go to File, Save As, and I'm going to put this in a folder on my desktop called Example. And all I have to do is name this file index.html. That's it. Now, I want to highlight something that could possibly cause you a major headache. Um, for example, uh, if I open up this Example folder, you're going to see that it just says index, but it doesn't say index.html, even though that's exactly what I just saved it as. The reason that this can happen is uh, it has to do with something of, of folder options. So if you want to change this, and I highly recommend that you do, you need to go to your control panel. And this is pretty much the same in all versions of, uh, of Windows. I need to be in the icons view so I can find the one called folder options. Mine's here. The, they're alphabetical, you should be able to find it. Under the View tab, there is an option called Hide Extensions for Known File Types. If you uncheck that, click Apply, and OK, and then when I come back here, there we go, now you can see it's index.html. Now I have had students have files that were index.html.html because they didn't realize that feature was checked. So be careful of that. The other thing I want to point out really quickly is I named this very specifically index.html because that's the name for any HTML document that's supposed to be a home page. So that's, you're going to see me do that a lot in, in all of my videos. Now, as we code, as we actually add code to this document, you'll need to see if the changes you make are actually showing up. If you double click on the index.html file, it's going to open up in a web browser. Now this is going to be a little different than what you're used to with most programs. You're going to be coding in one window, and you're going to be viewing the results in another. Now, some of the newer versions of Windows will let you do this. If you drag Windows to the sides, you can see them. They'll take up half, half a screen. That might be helpful to you. And it really doesn't matter which browser that you use. Um, you can use Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Opera or Safari. They're all going to do pretty much the same thing. So now let's make some code. The first thing I'm going to do is we've got to write a, in a bunch of stuff. None of this actually shows up on the screen, but it's necessary for the computer to um, actually be able to render the page. The first thing is called the doc type. And for HTML5, it's simply this first line here. I should spell it correctly, doc type. Then we have an HTML tag, and one of its attributes can be language, and you can tell what language you wrote. You can tell the computer what language you wrote the, the website in. It helps with translation services. Next, I'm going to go in and uh, close the HTML tag and come back and fill in the rest. This is kind of an, an important technique. I'll do this a lot where I um, write the first tag, write this ending tag, and then I come back in and fill in the gap. Um, I will forget to write the ending tag if I don't do that. So next comes the head tag and its closing tag. I'll put some spaces here so you guys can see this a little better. And then I'll put in a body tag and a closing body tag. Inside the head tag, that's where we'll start, I'm going to tab. So whenever I have something that's nested inside of something else, I'll give it a tab. It tends to be a nice visual way of organizing your code. So the first thing I need is, this is a really strange one, meta char set equals UTF-8. You may be wondering, what the heck is that? Um, there are actually a bunch of different alphabets that the computer can use, and it's a very long story, but the computer for web design, you want the computer to use the UTF-8 language as opposed to any of the other alphabets that are in there. The other thing, we can add a title to our page, and I'll just call it my first page. 
close my title tag. Uh, just importantly, the doc type and meta tags do not need closing tags. It's a little quirk of HTML that a couple of them don't, but there you go. Those are the ones that don't. Okay. Now I'm going to save my document. So file, save. And I think I did it accidentally. Now I'm going to now I'm going to save my document. The quick way is just file save. Now if you're um, if you're used to doing file save as every single time, this is going to be the the easier way. First off, I want you to notice something. My mouse is pointed right here in the upper left of Notepad. It's got a tiny little asterisk. What that means is I have not yet saved any of these changes. If I do file, save, the little asterisk disappears. That, that lets me know that this file is currently saved. A lot of programs do this. Photoshop and Dreamweaver will have tiny microscopic little asterisks that let you know when something's saved or not. Also, the keyboard shortcut for this, for save, is Control S. And it just automatically saves without you having to um, go through the whole save as dialog and click save and overwrite. You don't have to do that every time. Just file save. On a Windows, it's Control S. On a Mac, it is Command S. Okay, so now I've saved my HTML file. The only real change, the only thing that should show up is my first page should be showing up in the tab, but it's not. And the reason is that this browser has not yet been refreshed. So that's a problem that uh, a lot of people don't realize. They make all these changes in Notepad, then they don't refresh the browser and they think something's going wrong. Um, I need to expand Firefox so that you can see the little, little refresh button. And then you can see my first page shows up in the, the tab. Now, the, there is a keyboard shortcut for that as well. It's the F5 command key across the top of the keyboard and that will uh, quickly refresh or reload the page. So now let's actually add something to the page. Uh, anything that you want to show up in the in the browser you add in between the body tags. So here's an H1 and I'll just give it something silly like page title close it and I'll put in a nice little paragraph and inside the paragraph hello how are you today? Great example. I just hit Control S. I'm going to come over to Firefox and hit F5. And my changes show up. Awesome. Now, if I look in the example folder, I just put a picture in there. And it's a little cute, adorable picture of a kitten. And I just want to show you how to drop an image into a web page. So, in order to make this happen, it does have to be in my, in, nested in my body tag and I have to use the IMG tag. It's, it's short for image. And if you use a strange attribute called SRC, it stands for source, and it just wants to know where's the picture that I want to use. And I've titled it picture.jpg. That's actually the bare minimum that you need to get a web page in. If I refresh the page, there's a cute little kitten for you. There, that should make you smile. Okay, now before I let you go, I want to show you how you can check any web page to make sure that it's correct. I'm actually going to do this through a Google search. Look up HTML validator. And the very first thing that should come up is the W3C validation markup service. This is the website that is maintained by the people who make HTML and you can validate a file by uploading it. And this is like spell check for your HTML. It will literally tell you what line your problems are on. So I'm going to browse go into my example folder. There's the index.html file. I'm going to open that guy and I'm going to check it. Now I expected to find one error because there was something I forgot. and I did this intentionally. When you get the red bar, you got to fix something. If you scroll down, you're going to see something like this. Validation output, one error. Line 12, that's really useful. It tells me exactly where the error is. An image element must have an alt attribute except under certain conditions. Okay, so what that means is I didn't have an alt tag for my image. So all I have to do is go back here and do this. Alt equals, and an alt attribute is a text description of a picture. So I will put 
adorable little kitty. And that's fine. Now I'm going to file save. And I have to rerun the validator. It's best not to just refresh this. It's actually best to go back. And it's already loaded up under the browse. But then I'm just going to click check. And it comes out again. Awesome. So the document was successfully checked as HTML5. It still gives me one warning though, and this is a little odd thing about HTML5. It's actually so new that we're considered to be using an experimental feature. HTML5 is just not quite entirely out of the experimental stage yet. So no matter what I do, I will always get this warning, but it does mean that your code is okay, as long as you've got that, got it down to here in the nice green bar. So there you go. That's how you're going to check your web pages, web pages and make sure that everything is correct.